So I've been wanting to make a video about this topic for a while, but kind of been demotivated recently. That's kind of irrelevant. You clicked on this video to learn about lexical analysis. Now, there are some videos on this topic floating about, but I really think that it's kind of explained poorly and it really shouldn't take any more than 15 minutes to implement a lexer or to even explain one because it's really simple. Really, any program that analyzes text is going to use it to some degree. And of course, this is used in programming languages. Lexical analysis is essentially taking some text and then splitting it up into portions or substrings where each substring has a specific significance or meaning. All right, maybe a better sentence is taking a string, splitting it up, and slapping labels on the substrings, because that's essentially what's happening. And now the substrings along with their labels are called tokens. And tokens really just help derive meaning from random text. In the context of a compiler or an interpreter, a token could represent any number of things. It could represent a keyword, a number, an identifier, a string, really anything. One of the most common ways to represent tokens when you're writing or implementing Elixir is to have a struct or maybe even a class, depending on the language, where you have the string itself and then maybe an enumerated value, an enumerated type with the token type. And so the ultimate goal of Elixir is simply to take a string and turn it into these tokens. Now, this entire process is so simple or can be simplified so much that you don't necessarily need to have this type of structure to represent tokens. You can just do string splitting and a really, really simplistic lexer could probably be implemented in as few as one line of code. But obviously, most lexers are more complicated than that. And a good lexer or one that's useful is not going to be that simplistic. There are alternative names to Lexer, such as Tokenizer and Scanner, because really all a Lexer does is it scans through the input character by character, or the string character by character. Okay, so let's actually implement a Lexer. That's what we're going to do. So first, let's implement the token. And we kind of did this already before, but just to make it more concrete, we have one field for the token type. It'll be an enum or a constant. It could even be a string, just something to differentiate the tokens. And then a field for the substring, which is called the lexeme or a literal, which is just the value of the string as it exists within the source code or the input string. There are other optional fields you can add. Maybe you could track the line and column numbers for each token. That's something that you could do. But really, this should be fine. Now, to make my code more concise and also to avoid unnecessary allocations, I'm going to be using slicing, which is essentially taking portions of the string and just having a pointer to that place in the string with the length. In other languages, they probably have some sort of method or function that you can use to slice out strings, so you can use that. Now, lexers have key parts that exist, usually the input string itself, the current position within the input string, an index, and then the next position in the input string, the following character, and then the value of the current character within that string. Now, what we're going to be doing is scanning character by character. And if we encounter a specific pattern or a specific character, then we'll change the behavior of the lexer to tokenize different types of tokens. Next, we're going to create a procedure or method uh, if you're using classes that simply moves the position and read position forward. And those are the indexes of the current position in the string and the next position in the string. Once we reach the end of the file, there are no longer any more indexes into the string. So we should return a null byte to mark the end of the file, because if we don't, then we get like overflow errors or out of bounds errors or just crashing. So we want to avoid that. The simplest thing to tokenize are single character tokens since you just check if the current character being iterated over is equal to the character of a certain token type. Then you just set the token type. It's really that simple. At the end, we can extract the lexeme by slicing the input using the position and read position, which gives us a substring of the current character in the string. We then assign this as our lexeme and then advance the position and read position using read char. Finally, we just return the token at the end. This procedure or method allows us to lex any number of single character tokens. 
Now to handle multi-character tokens, we need something called look ahead, which just means checking the next character before making a decision. Typically, people would implement maybe a method called peak char, which would just simply return the next character in the input, but we can actually make a procedure called expect char, which will do more things at once and will simplify the code a little bit, in my opinion. It will take an expected character as an argument, compare it to the next character in the input. If the next character matches, it will advance the lexer and return true otherwise it would return false now we can simply call expect char and change the token type accordingly at the moment our logic doesn't really handle two character tokens very well but we can fix this pretty easily first we just add a variable at the top of the procedure to store the starting position then before slicing the input we advance both the position and read position and finally we extract the lexeme using the start position and the current position after advancing everything else remains the same and then everything works perfectly. Skipping white space is pretty simple. We just advance past spaces, new lines, carriage returns, and tabs. And these characters will still act as delimiters, separating tokens, but they will not be tokens themselves. And then for comments, if we encounter a double slash, we skip characters until we reach either a new line or a null byte of zero, because that means we've reached the end of the file. The strings are straightforward to handle. We set the token type to string, call read string, which advances the lexer past the string literal. It does this by first skipping the opening double quotes, then reading characters until it finds the closing double quote. Once the string is fully read, it returns the extracted slice as the lexeme in next token. Lastly, in our default case, we handle identifiers and numbers, which are the final two token types we need to implement. Before that though, we do need helper procedures to check whether a character is a number or an alphabetic character. And these procedures are simple, they just return true if the character falls within a certain ASCII range. The isAlpha procedure also accounts for underscores since they are allowed in identifiers. And you could also add a procedure to check for hexadecimal numbers, but to keep things simple, I'll either cover that in another video or let you figure it out because it really shouldn't be too difficult to figure out. So now we just create the two final procedures, I believe, which are read ident or read identifier and read num or read number. The read ident will, like the next token, store the current position, but then we read all the characters that are either letters, numbers, or underscores because all of these can be part of an identifier. Once we reach a non-matching character, we extract a slice of the input from the start position to the current position. We set this slice as our lexeme and check if it matches a keyword using a lookup table. If it does, we assign the appropriate token type and return early to avoid any unnecessary advancement at the end of the procedure. Read num pretty much follows the same process, except we only check for numeric characters, and once we reach a non-digit, we extract the lexeme, set its type to int, and then return early, just like we did with read ident. Now the last thing we need to do is handle the EOF token, which just means that if we encounter a null byte of zero, we set the token type to EOF. And then instead of slicing with the read position, which would cause an out-of-bounds error, we slice everything after the current position, and this just creates a empty slice with a length of zero. Since the value itself doesn't matter, we can return early to avoid any errors at the end of the procedure. We don't need to explicitly handle illegal characters because in Odin, the default value is zero, and as long as zero in our enum corresponds to illegal, it will just automatically be implicit. By default, we will still slice over a single character at the end, ensuring that everything is accounted for. In the end, we still return a token with the correct token type, lexeme, and position for error messages. Now, if your language is not goaded like the Norse gods language, then you could just set the token type to illegal and then continue through to the end of the procedure. That's basically it for writing the lexer. You can test it by creating a read eval print loop, or I guess it's technically what a read lex loop because it's not actually evaluating anything or supplying a file as input. Let me know if you'd like to cover this in another language like JavaScript or C Sharp to reach a larger audience, or if you'd like some more advanced features like Unicode support, hexadecimal and binary numbers and floats, or skipping multi-line comments. The Git repo for this code will be on the channel's GitHub. Hope you learned something. See you soon.